Let's talk about Rand Paul. Let's talk about muff freedoms. I haven't talked about Rand Paul much on this channel, uh, so we're not going to go into a whole bunch of context or history where he's concerned. But I'm sure that when I say the name Rand Paul, there's a lot of you who already have kind of an idea of uh, what kind of conversation we're going to be getting into. Uh, so that will be a thing and an event and everything else. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and get into the fan art section. We have this abomination. I made a thumbnail one time, uh, and I had I had the you are an embarrassment from when I was tackling Marjorie Taylor Greene and the broken neck thing from something completely separate. Uh, and I just posted it because it was a, it was a halfway done thumbnail, and so uh, I did that on Twitter. And now apparently Mr. Baldurus has taken that in, into uh, fan art. It is now canonized as fan art you are an embarrassment <laughs> we can use this meme forevermore <laughs> and from supercat765 we have a wall-eyed derp-faced necosaurus and i'm gonna be honest th so the whole reason that supercat made this from what they said uh, it was a reaction to a comment i made once about not being able to get eyes point in the right direction because when i try to draw i can't get the eyes looking right ever uh, so apparently they decided to purposefully draw the eyes not looking right. Also, those are beautiful hands. Can I know they're still sketchy, but can we appreciate that these are beautiful hands? Can we? Just for a second. Mainly because I know that there are several artists that are triggered by the word hands. You know, for some reason. Not in the clinical sense. In the, in the rhetorical sense. With that said. All right. Rand Paul, let's take a look at this thing you posted it's on Tom. Instagram. Can I? Is there a way I can make this bigger? Enter full screen mode. That? That did not help. For us to resist. That? That's under. That's fine. Can I please? Can I zoom in? Can I get some semblance of normalcy here? I hate. It's time for Hello. us to resist. They can't arrest all of us. Okay, let me just say right now, that's a weird... I've, I've never liked this form of argumentation. Because uh, when you go, it's time to resist. They can't, they can't arrest all of us. Um, people who have family that depend on them, people who... This is, like, this is like my issue with people who like LARP revolution a whole lot. People whose families rely on them to survive uh, become collateral damage in this type of ideology. They can't arrest all of us. Actually, I think you'll find that we already have the largest prison population in the in the world. The United States can. Now, that's a problem. But let's go ahead and see why. What thing do you think uh, they need to try to arrest all of us for, Rand Paul? They can't keep all of your kids home from school. They can't keep every government building closed. We don't have to accept the mandates lockdowns and harmful policies of the petty tyrants and bureaucrats we can simply say no not again so i have a question if your job says that you're not working there uh because of a mandate can you just simply say no is that a thing you can do I, I really don't think that you actually have that kind of individual power um also if you really want to have this wave of people being able to uh, argue against the government being able to do all this stuff. Having unions and stuff like that for representation is a good way to manage that. Um, but people in general are scattered. As, consider how few people actually vote Green or vote Libertarian. People in general are scattered and you're not going to be able to rely on them for something like this. This is why a general strike doesn't work without multiple unions. Because without organizers, and I'm sorry, Rand Paul, you're not an effective organizer, Without organizers for these things, this this won't be effective. But here's my issue. Why are lockdowns a problem? Well, there's, there's two main reasons lockdowns are a problem. One, individual people's mental health. The amount of time we have to spend indoors versus being able to go out and uh, associate with our peers in some way, shape, or form for several people can cause negative side effects. This is one of the reasons why, uh, despite the dangers, I choose to go to Friday Night Magic every single week and also uh, Monday Modern over at my local card shop because these are instances where I can sit down with peers and I can 
converse. I can operate with other people and return to some form of normalcy. Yes, it is a risk, but it is a risk that I take because I have a delicate balancing act between what constitutes my physical health and what constitutes my mental health. Now, I don't go outside anywhere near as much as I used to, because uh, I used to do things like going to Six Flags every week or two, because Six Flags passes are like $8 a month, so it costs pennies to do so. These are things that I used to do, but I don't anymore. They're not really uh, comfortable things to do anymore. They're not things that are safe to do uh, anymore. Being around that many people is not, but small local areas, that's not as bad. That's less dangerous than you going on your grocery store trip. It also helps support a local business that would not survive if it weren't for people like me saying, hey, I am going to go there because it is a battle between my physical and mental health. But that's a thing we're able to do. So the other problem with lockdown is these businesses having to shut down because they're not receiving adequate federal support, especially local businesses not being able to receive adequate federal support. And then individual people not being able to receive adequate federal support because they are locked in. Local business owners get locked in and the only places that are allowed to uh, weather these kinds of lockdowns are large corporations. Now, that is not the fault of the lockdowns themselves. The lockdowns are, in many cases, a necessary evil. They're a thing that I wish didn't have to happen, but they're a thing that could have, at one point, uh, been used to annihilate COVID. But never got to because we weren't able to fully support lockdowns. Why weren't we able to? Well, as I said in a previous video, there's a variety of factors, and trying to isolate it to a single one is a bit naive, but one of the largest ones in my estimation is that somehow as the richest country in the, in the entire world, we were unable to adequately support our local businesses and our local workers. People receive three checks in the United States, and each and every check was a hard-fought battle in Congress where people bitched back and forth about what would or wouldn't be shoved into these, these uh, mandates for checks for everyone uh, because they kept trying to shove fat into the bills. They became pig fat bills. And bureaucrats kept on going back and forth about what should or shouldn't be in them, instead of just saying, wait, hold on, why don't we just talk about all the shit that does not have to do with these checks for American citizens and have that as a separate conversation? That's really inconvenient for our politicians. They're very lazy. They'd rather shove a thousand pages of pig fat into one of these bills instead of shoving, oh, I don't know, all of that shit somewhere that it actually belongs. Now, because this happened multiple times, we were not able to get adequate paychecks to American citizens. I'm sure there's a lot of people who were like, oh my god, I was able to get three checks, this is amazing. Yeah, because you haven't experienced that, you haven't experienced government aid before in the United States. We do a terrible job at government aid for people. People like Rand Paul think that government aid is a form of oppression, that somehow being handed money to survive more easily uh, is a form of oppression. I don't agree with that level of naive thinking. Being handed money is not oppression, Rand Paul. In many cases, it's a form of survival. Had our government been able to adequately support local businesses and adequately support local people, not giant mega corporations, then the lockdowns wouldn't have been anywhere near as much of a problem because everybody could have just sat home. Think about the world we live in right now. We live in a world right now where you have the ability to hop on the internet and hang out with your friends. You have the ability to play games, watch movies, do all kinds of things to keep your mental health in some form of check right now. And yet the lockdowns are super inconvenient for people. Why? Not because they didn't have ways of keeping themselves, you know, manage for several months of lockdown, but because they didn't have adequate support. Our government said, lock everything down, but then we're not going to actually help you. Go ahead, stay home, don't go to work. But almost everybody in the United States is a paycheck away from bankruptcy. They're a paycheck away from a, a disaster they can't recover from. That's not something that, uh-huh, my freedoms 
are going to be able to fix. That's a problem with the way we run things right now. I could get an entire rant about how this is an issue with uh, for-profit motives for all businesses and the bottom line fucking over every single worker that happens to work at the business, but that's a conversation for another day. Rand Paul, let's continue. I see stories from across the country of parents standing up to the unions and school boards. I see brave moms standing up and saying, my kids need to go back to school in person. So here's the thing. Why do your kids have to go back in school in person? A lot of times this is because parents uh, do not have the ability to monitor their kids at home because they have to go to work again. A lot of this could be helped, mitigated, even solved by proper federal support, as opposed to forcing teachers onto the funeral pike because, well, even though COVID has a lower chance of killing children, uh, we actually just had a recent instance of a child under one dying of COVID. Uh, so even though they have a lower chance of dying from COVID, your teachers, who are probably older and at a higher risk, are going to have to be there with little disease incubators all the time. This is not a good thing. Federal help could have done a lot in solving this problem in a multitude of ways. On the one hand, federal help towards the uh, to, towards local workers would allow them the luxury of staying home with their children and giving them the ability to facilitate their children having uh, time at school online while we handle this. But if we take the Doomer route of things, where COVID's never going to go away and we have to treat it like a seasonal flu, and we have to accept that this incredibly deadly disease that mutates at a very rapid rate and gets more dangerous with the mutations is something that we're going to have to live with in perpetuity, then if we accept that, then the secondary thing we need federal assistance for is, one, health care. We could use federally assisted health care, which is something the United States also does piss poorly at. We could also, and this is just a thought, be spending a lot more money on our schools to make sure that these classrooms are more safe for the teachers, making sure there is proper protective equipment for teachers and classrooms so that they can operate safely. That's not really been the case in most cases. A lot of these places are still very, very dangerous uh, incubation areas for COVID, and there have been districts where things just spread like wildfire because they're not properly enforcing things like mask mandates in the schools themselves. And the argument given by several teachers somehow, magically, is that they can't enforce a dress code policy that includes masks, despite historically, and this was my experience in school, uh, them being able to enforce a dress code policy that mandated uh, skirts being of a certain size and mandating spaghetti straps on clothing. Apparently, teachers were able to very effectively uh, fight against dress code uh, inordinances uh, when it came to preventing girls uh, who were minors, who they shouldn't be looking at in the first place uh, from wearing clothing that was too revealing or too distracting. Um, no graphic tees was another thing that I had to deal with back when I was in uh, Pensacola Christian Academy. They're able to effectively mandate these things, but suddenly when it's a mask, that's not a thing that they're able to mandate magically, somehow, as if it's in this unique category of dress that is entirely different from the other ones that we're used to. There's a lot of issues at the federal level, Rand Paul, that, that need to be addressed, but the issue is not the lockdowns themselves. We need to do lockdowns with correct support for citizens and infrastructure, but we don't have that. That's the problem. And here's the thing. People like Rand Paul from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, are also against a lot of that government assistance in these vectors. I believe Rand Paul's one of the people who wants to see most of this stuff privatized. Correct me if I'm wrong. We are at a moment of truth and a crossroads. Will we allow these people to use fear and propaganda to do further harm to our society, economy, and children? Or will we stand together and say, absolutely not, not this time, I choose freedom. So you choose freedom, but you don't actually advocate for the things that allow that freedom to be a thing. 
the protective measures that are here right now are because we haven't eliminated the thing that causes us to need the protective measures in the first place. Let's think of masks as a seatbelt for just a moment. If we can eliminate the risk of people flying through their windshields during a car crash uh, and do it effectively in all scenarios, we don't need the seat belts themselves. That method of self-protection no longer needs to be regulated at any point in time. They can be a personal choice because the necessity is gone. As we have not found a perfect mechanism to prevent people from flying through their windshields and dying because they went headfirst into a tree, uh, seat belt mandates are a thing that you will continue to experience uh, probably in perpetuity until that particular problem is solved, and even then there might be a societal factor to deal with. If you view masks the same way, uh, until we've managed to eliminate the root cause of the problem, the COVID virus itself, then the masks are going to be a thing that you're probably going to have to deal with in some way, shape, or form. Mandates uh, for businesses may be a thing that continues until we manage to eliminate COVID, depending on which view you have of how effective we can be at eliminating COVID. So, again, like a seatbelt, if you can find me the mechanism by which we eliminate this thing, then let's go ahead and do that. But if you cannot, you can't just scream like an infantile child, my freedoms, my freedoms, my freedoms, and then just get people hurt and killed. You see, for every person that screams about masks and gets angry about CDC guidelines, that person ends up having a rippling effect. Other people echo the things that they say, and then people who are immunocompromised end up having to stay indoors and end up having to take the brunt of the rest of us. It should be that we all inconvenience ourselves a little bit so that everybody can be open and free with no issues. Instead, people don't like being inconvenienced even a little bit, and therefore they want people who they consider below them to simply suffer. As a lot of people have said with the United States healthcare system, you're free to do whatever. You're even free to die. And that's it, apparently. That's it. It's time for us to resist. Let me, let me they can't arrest all of us. They can't keep all of your kids home from school. They can't keep every government building closed. Okay, I think that's it. That, that's, that's all it was, apparently. I thought there'd be more to it than that. But I guess I can't expect more from an Instagram post. Anyway, point is... Point is... If you want mandates to no longer be a thing, then do your best to help find a way to eliminate this virus. Until then, participation in the effects of mandates are a thing that you are unfortunately going to have to deal with until things are eliminated or we find other effective ways of adjusting to these new norms. That said, I don't think there's much of a problem with putting on a piece of cloth every now and again when you are in an enclosed space with other people. If it allows people who are immunocompromised to operate safer and operate in a way that does not affect their mental health. I'm not willing to sacrifice them or our teachers or anyone else on the funeral pyre of your childishness. Well, with that said, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments section below. Let me know over on Twitch. Hit the follow button if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And with all that said, insert into video tagline.